Hey, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville. And guess what? We are in block 11 of our embroidered sampler. You know what that means? There's only one more to go. So just because I love you guys, I actually am making it a little bit easier for you today. So you're gonna learn one new technique and that's how to create a reversible applique frame like you see here on our block. So we're gonna use the Bernina Embroidery software to turn this little Persian bud design into its own pattern run design. Um, we're gonna do some reducing mirror merge and stuff like that, but at the end, the quilting part, we're gonna do ruler work and that's using our Amanda Murphy good measure ruler and a ruler work foot and all of those good things. So, ah, it's not that hard, I promise. Now the stitch out time is gonna take a little bit, but don't worry, you've got it under control, I'm sure. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I'm in the Bernina embroidery software and I have chosen the Persian bud, which is number CC30415. I changed it to the Erin Green that we're using in our embroidery sampler project. And now I want to show you how to make magic happen. So this little leaf is going to be used in a very special way. I am using this to create the cover stitch on our reverse applique frame. So the first thing that we need to do is save this into our software as a pattern run design. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to just left click and drag a little box around it. Then we're going to go to the settings tab at the top of the window. After that, there is a create pattern tool. We're going to do that. And then here is where we can um, pick our embroidery set. Now, if you've never done this before, you're gonna have to type something in there. So for instance, you're gonna type, in, you're gonna go in here to create, and you're gonna write your new pattern set name. So let's say I'm gonna write embroidery um, or Gail's personal run collection or whatever. For me, I wrote embroidery sampler, but you might want to write like favorite designs, I, whatever you want to call it. And then you say, okay. Then from your drop down menu, each time you, you create a new pattern set, you have an option to choose of the ones you've created, which ones you're working for. So let's do um, favorite designs, for instance. And then I'm going to call this bud because it's a little leaf bud and then say okay now down at the very very bottom left hand corner of the screen is something that says enter start point of the of the reference line so this is where we're going to touch one point and then another point now if i go the end of my bud to the tip of the bud then I am going to be able to see this leaf go basically head to toe. If I were to decide to do it sideways, then my buds will be all standing vertically as I make them. So I want this end to the tip. So I'm going to left click at the very bottom of my leaf and then left click again at the tippity tip tip of the leaf. And now my bud has been created. This is my pattern run. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to select closed, or uh, I'm going to select the ellipse. And then I'm going to click in the center here. And I'm just going to make any shape, just like this. And then enter. So I'm going to show you how to do this again once we frame our design, but this is just going to show you what this is going to look like. So now that's not our design that we selected. This is just like the little default design that comes up. So now we're going to make sure that it turns fuchsia. So I'm using object properties for that. Oh, and if your design actually looks more like the actual stitching like this, 
you can just click this button, which is the show artistic view. And in this case, I think sometimes it's a little bit easier to see it with the actual line drawing of the stitch rather than the artistic view. But I'm going to go to the properties. And now I'm using pattern run, but under pattern set, I don't want my heirloom set. I'm going to click the select option. And then from the drop down menu here, remember my favorite designs? Well, there's my bud. I select that. Now I select OK and then OK. And there is my circle with my bud end to end. OK, here I am in my Bernina embroidery software and I have the palmette open. Remember this one? We did this one in the very, very first class. But no way, no way are we going to embroider this this size this time. So I want to do a few things first. So I have found that I sometimes do not like working in artistic view like this. So I want to be able to really see what we're grabbing. So I'm going to click on the button, left click, that says show artistic view. So now you can see when I click on something, I'm going to be really able to see what I'm selecting on this design. Use my little mouse here in my selector tool, and I'm going to left click and drag to select my design. Now, I have found that I want to resize this, and when I was playing around a little bit with my test, I found the perfect proportion for this particular block is to do 64%. So I'm going to go up here to the percentage on my size and write 64 and hit enter on my keyboard and now I've reduced that by 64%. Now another thing I want to do is select this again but in order to easily select something and be able to maneuver things around I'm going to left click and drag again and then I'm going up here to arrange and select group. Now that is going to allow me to just simply click on it and now I can move it around and do things to it. So what I want to do to this now is I want to actually go over here to my toolbox drawer. So I've got like the edit tools and the auto digitize and all of those things and I'm going to use mirror merge. So I'm going to draw a box around my design to select it or remember I can simply select it now because I've grouped it together. So I'm going to use the mirror merge vertical and then I want to kind of leave some space in between these two. I like that spacing and now I'm just going to left click. And then I can select this one and I can select this one or I can draw a little box around both of these and move these up to the center of the hoop. So you probably noticed that I also have another tab open, and that is our flower. And once again, I can do artistic view or not artistic view or whatever, but I want to copy this. So I can hit copy up here at the top of my screen. And now I'm going to go back to my other design, and then I'm going to paste. And so there is my little flower right there in the center. And that looks pretty good. I like it. It's now time to put the reverse applique touches onto it. So this is where the next stitch is going to actually stitch an oval with your fabric that's going to be the frame laid on top of this design while it's in the hoop. Then you're going to do a little stitch, then that stitch you're going to trim, then under that there's going to be a little zigzag stitch that's going to tack everything down and then finally that bud that we made is going to be fashioned into an overcast stitch that's going to cover the raw edges of the frame material. So it's going to start by making an oval. So let's do a few things first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select over here in our toolboxes from our digitizing tab, we're going to choose the ellipse button. And now once we have the ellipse chosen, we're going to choose the single outline stitch. And then I'm just going to go down here on my thread colors list and select like any color that is not the last color that was stitching, which is stitch number color number five, because color number five is the outline stitching. So I'm just picking this bright pink color. You can pick whatever you want. 
And now I'm going to select right in the center of the design and I'm left clicking. Then I'm going to draw, drag my little cursor exactly across the street and let's do right about there. So I'm left clicking again. Now I'm going to draw my oval down until it fills the hoop, but not completely. Then I'm going to set it and hit enter on my keyboard. So now this is what we've created. We've created the stitch that's going to hold our frame fabric down to our lighter uh, background fabric that we've just embroidered the design on. Then I'm going to select this design again, and I'm going to copy and paste and pick the next color, which is color number eight. Then finally, here, I'm going to go to Object Properties, and I don't want a single outline type now. I want the zigzag. And 0.118 inches is just a little bit too wide for me. It's going to poke up like the sample that I actually am stitching out. I don't like how wide that is. So I made that adjustment and it's 0 0.02 inches. And now, okay. And so now if we look really close here, we can see that there's just a very light zigzag stitch there. So now finally, I'm going to copy and paste again, this time going back to object properties, and I'm going to select pattern run. Now remember, we created our cute little bud and we made a new collection group. So it's not the heirloom pattern set. We made a pattern set called favorite designs. And there's our bud. And now we're going to say, OK, apply, and then OK again. And now we can see that it's framed with our bud. Now I'm going to click away. Now it has arbitrarily picked the first color in our design as our um, color, but we can change this. So I'm going to add a new color into my design. And I'm going to go down here to orange. And I'm going to the Aaron green color because this is a bud and I'd like it to be green. So I'm going to assign and then I'm going to say apply. OK. And now I have green. So now I'm going to select my blue Persian bud, select my green color, click away. And now it's green. So now I'm really happy with the way this looks. But if I click over here to color film, you're going to see that I have quite a bit of color changes here and I would really like to join all of these together so that it's going to stitch a little bit easier for me. So I'm going to start by going to my keyboard and hitting control A to select everything. Then I'm going to go to arrange and sequence by color. And this is totally awesome because now I'm able to stitch out all of the colors the way that I want them, except stitch number six really needs to stitch before color number five. So I'm going to select on the daffodil and move it up one. And now I'm going to say, OK, it's going to think about life. And now we can see how that changed over here on our color film. And now everything is stitching totally well. The only thing that I want to kind of tweak is seven through eight because I think my oval is slightly cockeyed. So I'm going to select seven, hold down shift on my keyboard and click eight and nine. And now I can click on my little fuchsia thing and I get these white nodes and I'm just going to tilt that just a little bit. So that it looks like it's standing up a little bit straighter. Okay, now I'm happy. Now it's time to send this design to my USB stick and stitch it out. 
as far as hooping this month, you can use the mega hoop or you can use the maxi hoop or you can use the jumbo hoop depending on what machine you have. Um, you don't need to use the maxi hoop. You could certainly fit this in the mega hoop, but uh, I just happened to be uh, sewing from home this evening, so I just went ahead and used my maxi hoop. Now, in the hoop is my stable stick stabilizer. Um, this one is kind of like a little bit of a go-to for me when I'm just, you know, I need a lot of stabilizer. I want it to kind of stay in the hoop, but then I don't want to think too much about the prep and the squirting it with water if it's hydro stick and whatever. You could probably have just as much of a good experience with this if you would hoop a couple layers of a tearaway stabilizer um, with some adhesive, but then you would want to squeeze all of those items in the hoop. Now, another benefit of this is our fabric is actually cut nine inches by 18 inches. With the stable stick, I can just stick this on and put it in the center just like this and I don't have to worry about um, trying to squeeze all of that fabric in the hoop because you see here it's quite narrower than my hoop. So that's another benefit of using the stable stick. So you might have wondered why do I have the paper side up like this with this um, stabilizer and that kind of protects the adhesive of the stable stick from getting on my hoop. So what I'm going to do is just score this paper and then peel it away in this area here. And then what I'm going to do is uh, lay my fabric down like you saw me do. And then I am going to take it to the machine and I'm still going to do a little bit of a basting box around it once it's stuck on there. And then my piece will be really nicely stabilized and I'll be able to stitch this somewhat dense design. So I've just peeled that off there to expose the stickiness. And then I've cut this a little bit generously. So I don't have to worry about putting this exactly in the hoop, uh, you know, perfectly centered because after I've done all of my embroidery and everything to this and I quilt it, I'm gonna kind of square it up then. So in the meantime, let's just flatten this down just like this. Now, if you were nervous or timid, you could draw your vertical line and your horizontal line like this so that you had some reference point for the center. Now, I also want to remind you that our piece, if you're using the directional fabric like I am, I'm using the Allison Glass Sun Print in Unicorn, and you can see that there is a faint design on this material. And uh, so if it's directional, keep in mind that our block is going to be oriented this way. So you want your design, if there's a top and bottom, going around like this. Now I'm getting ready to stitch here and I want you to notice I've selected my design and I'm ready to stitch. I'm in my stitching screen, but I selected this button here. And when you bring your design into the hoop, it looks just like this. There's my design that you saw me create on the computer earlier. But if I touch this once, it's gonna create a bounding box around the design close to the design. When I press it again, it creates a basting box around the border of the hoop. So I want my basting box around the closest part of the design. So I'm gonna to toggle back again, and you can see there's the basting box around the perimeter of the sewable area in the hoop. There's no basting box. And now there's the basting box that I want. So I've got my, it doesn't matter what I have my machine threaded with because this is gonna be picked out later, but I'm just using the same color that color number one is just so I don't have to change the thread again. And don't forget, when you're using a Bernina machine, you, it likes you to tell it that you have the number 26 foot on and that you have the single hole plate on, which I actually do. Okay, now we're ready. Okay. 
All right, so that's about the most excitement we're gonna see for a few more color changes. So what I'm gonna do is stitch the um, all the colors of the flower and the insert. So I'll meet you back here at the machine when it's time to add our applique overlay. Okay, so we fixed or stitched our design and I'm keeping this dark color because it matches closely, eh, close enough anyway, to this uh, outer frame fabric. And I'm just gonna place this down right here like that. And I'm kind of centering it as well. And once again, with my piece that I cut here, I wanted to make sure that I get most of my directions going the right way on here. So I'm just gonna line this up just like so. And now this stitch that's gonna stitch is just gonna do an oval outline and we are gonna trim some of the middle of it out after it's complete. Now it's gonna stitch a tack down stitch. So I'm gonna just take my hoop off just a little bit and use my nice sharp scissors here to kind of make a little hole. Be careful not to cut the bottom fabric. And now we're gonna do the tack down stitch. Now this tack down stitch is kind of designed to just hold those little raw edges down, but it's gonna be covered because we're gonna come along with that little green leafy um, Persian bud pattern, pattern run design that we created. So there's our little design stitching out and it's gonna take a fair amount of time to go around this oval shape. Um, I did have to, when I got to this color, this last color on our design, I did have to set up a little bit of a different way for the machine to actually um, stitch. So I had to turn off all of the cutting features because otherwise it just stops to cut between each leaf and um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So when you've got your embroidery design open and you wanna turn off the cutting between the colors, you can just press this button here and if it doesn't have the yellow ring around it, it's not activated. But another one I also like to choose is the gears here. And then you go into your embroidery settings and then there's another cutting feature. So this one is to turn it off between color changes, and this one turns it off between um, jump stitches. So I'm turning all of those off for this last round of the embroidery, just because of some weirdness with this Persian bud pattern run design.
All right, so here's our finished product. And all I wanna do now is just show you how I take the stabilizer off the back. Now, if you look really closely here, you'll see our little um, basting stitches. It's hard to remove the basting stitches without removing it's hard to remove the stabilizer without removing the basting stitches, so I'm just gonna take those out really quickly. And now I'm gonna turn this over, and I wanna tell you a little bit. So when I started this, I had a little bit of a devil may care attitude towards our, um, basting down here or that tack down stitch but my thread color was a little too dark and you can kind of see little peaks of dark poking out from under these leaves so when you do yours just make sure that you match your um, frame color and if you um, do that then that's not going to be noticeable at all now i'm going to just tear into my piece just like this And then once I tear the outside, I'm gonna also tear the stabilizer out of the inside. And then what, how I do that is I tend to give it a tug on the bias and that pops it like that. And so now I can trim this out. All right, and then what we're gonna do is, we have a light background, so we wanna make sure that we trim any stray threads away. Just so we don't have those dark threads underneath when we quilt. All right, so I've got my duckbill applique scissors and I'm gonna cut into here. And this little duckbill really helps for me to not cut my background fabric. So I can run that little piece right along the edge and just cut around here. We don't have to be 100% accurate. We just wanna separate these two layers. You know, the disadvantage of white fabric is that my old eyes sometimes can't see the stabilizer. So I missed a little spot there. Let's get that off of there. There we go. Trim my little thread. All right, so now we're going to take our backing material and our batting and lay this down on top. And I'm gonna cross hatch in the middle here and stitch around my green piece. And that's all I'm gonna do for now for the quilting. Okay, I'm setting up for my ruler work and I wanna point out some angles on our ruler work um, good measure ruler. This is the one that um, Amanda Murphy designed and see this 30 degree angle right here It's it's one of the white ones and I'm gonna line up this 30 degree line right down the middle of my flower Just like this and I have thread in my machine that matches my background fabric here So I'm gonna do a 30 degree angle going this way and a 30 degree angle going this way ultimately but I'm gonna start right here with this. So I'm using my Bernina Q20 and this is a, a sit down long arm quilting machine. So I'm going to start by just bringing my needle down and bringing my thread up and then I'm going to pull my threads. 
Okay, so I'm gonna hold this down just like this. And now I'm gonna drop my foot again. And now there's a stitch regulation on the Q20. So all I have to do is simply just press on the foot control and then drag this as slow or as fast as I want to. Now, I'm not gonna stitch in this flower area. So I'm gonna like tack my stitches just a little bit, stop, lift, and then gently carry my threads over to the other side of my flower here, knot, knot and now I'm going to jump over to about here because I'm going to put these designs half an or these lines half an inch from each other just like this so now I'm going to come back this direction and stop and tack it and now bring it forward there we go and stitch and tack and now go about a half an inch away again. There we go. And I'm lining this line right here up against my previously stitched design. So I've got a, there we go, perfect. And now I'm stitching. Now I'm gonna carry my thread over, come back this way, there we go. And now, once again, I'm gonna travel over here about a half an inch or so away, lining up that line with my previously stitched line. Tack it into place, stop, carry it over, and stop. And now I just am gonna continue with this process. And now in here, I'm just gonna get a little creative and just go around this little flower a little bit. There we go. Same over here. So now it'll go a little bit faster as we go the rest of the way around this. Okay, so I've done all of my 30 degree angles going in this direction. So now it's time to make them go in the other direction. And so that's where I can use my, my little lines here. And I don't wanna line up the 30 degree mark on this line because that'll just be weird and ugly. So I wanna figure out where they need to go in this direction. So much like I did before, I'm just gonna travel back down here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my 30 degree line here this time, right down the middle of my flower. So I have to travel down there to get to this line. So here we go. We're quilting our little hearts out here. All the way to there. So now let's get this going nice and perfect. So I've got just a couple little millimeters to go there. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my path going in this other direction. So I use the 30 degree angle that was on the opposite side of the ruler and I'm lining that up straight, this straight and even with our flower, just like this. So we get this nice little diamond shape at the end. And you can already see it kind of coming together here. So I'm gonna travel back there, line it up on the edge of that, that line right there.
All right, so finally, I wanna travel down to this point here, just over sewing this one little line. And now I'm gonna go all the way around my, my um, embroidery motif. But I'm being careful not to go into those outlines. I just want this to be a little flat here, but I don't wanna stitch over my dark outlines. I'm finished and it's cute. I just need to trim my threads and then I can put this aside until next month when we are gonna start trimming our finished blocks down, assembling them together, and then making our big giant embroidered center. But it starts next month with putting all of our stuff together to determine how big we're gonna make our center medallion and then we're gonna embroider. So next month, I want you to rest up, be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for the class so that we, um, are ready to, to put this project all together and be finished because it has been a fantastic year of embroidery. So here's a little preview of what we're doing. Now you can see over here on the left side, I did already start putting some of them together. You saw this in another month that we did, but I'm gonna be trimming these down and attaching them. And then there's the one that we just made. And then here are others. Now remember this one right here, I'm gonna redo. I wasn't happy, I made it too wide, I don't like the pink, so I'm redoing that one. So the next time you see this, you'll see my corrected one. And then you'll also see me show you how to assemble the two rows like this and this row so that we know how we're gonna put the very first block that we did together with this mystery block that we're making next month and then finally down with the block that we made today all right are you ready are you prepared to catch up so you can get right down to it next month sure you are okay well if you like this video and you want to see more just like it don't forget to check out our bernina of naperville youtube channel it's easy it's youtube.com slash bernina of naperville and there you can like comment and subscribe and if you want to know, and the minute we upload a new video, don't forget to just click the little bell and you'll get an alert. So until then, get embroidering on your embroidery sampler and we'll see you next time.